forgiveness and he will be forgiven. Would he be saved? He would know the Lord say to yes. I substantiate that by the thief on the cross, he was busy dying. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. The thief never killed six million Jews. <laughs> Again, I say, you will get against who it is we are talking about, sir. Face 
towards day. And if you look at the Greek Septuagint, the word used is proskeneo, which should have been translated as worship, but the translators translated as fell down before him. So there are alternative renderings to the word worship, which literally means proskeneo, which doesn't mean worship, it literally means according to Strong's Concordance and the uh, dictionaries in Greek, uh, both of them are Greek experts. It means, literally speaking, to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. Bow, crouch, crawl, kneel. When a dog comes to you and, and wants to basically show affection, it doesn't mean the dog is worshipping you. Of course not. Thomas's exclamations, my God and my Lord, were not to Jesus. They were exclamations to God Almighty Himself that He couldn't believe that Jesus Himself had suffered such an ordeal and had basically survived. Okay. Can I just respond to that? So the idea so far. Matthew 28, clearly the word is proskuneo, translated in the English Bible as worship. Are we correct in using the word worship as we are? Yes, we go back to Matthew 4. The context explains to us. We go back to Matthew chapter 4, where Satan says, All this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. And again, it's clearly worship that he's seeking uses the word proskuneo and go to verse 10. Away from me, Satan, which is written, worship the Lord your God. And again, it's proskuneo that is being used. And Matthew saw that, and as he spoke of Jesus in Matthew 28, he uses the exact same word that is used with reference to God, with reference to Jesus. So the context tells me we are right. Could I respond to that? Okay. Um, I've got two translations. One's a complete Bible and American translation by Edward, Edward Goodspeed and J. Howard Smith. In those particular verses in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew, Matthew 28, 17, it speaks about they threw themselves down and did homage to him. 14 verse 33, they fell down before him, or they went up to him and clasped his feet and bowed to the ground before him. The fact that I have to stand up today and bow down before uh, Bob or basically touch their feet, doesn't mean I'm literally worshipping them. In ancient societies, what did they do to the kings? What did the, what did the servants do to the kings? They bowed down before them. It doesn't mean they worship them. You, you have to look at the context behind the word proskuneo, because the word proskuneo is used for Abigail when she bowed down to David. But in that context, why is it that you don't translate it as worship? And you don't say that Abigail worshipped David. So why do you say it in the case of Jesus? I want to say good evening and thank you for the opportunity that you've given me. I'm going to state my question out of the scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Now, I want to uh, give this question to all the religious friends on the platform. Why are we leaning on the understandings of men and have to prove today the existence of one that you can only spiritually believe in or not? Well, well the truth is that no man should be our master. God's word is self-authenticating. In other words, God proves himself to be God without the assistance of men. And I think that's one of the unique properties of the Bible is that it comes to us as the authentic word of God because God himself bears witness with our spirit. So that's why I deliberately chose not to quote any scholars because they are men like I am. And what men say sometimes is very good and sometimes is very bad. But the problem is with all men is that we are sinful and we twist things to our own destruction. And uh, I would say, and I've said this to many people, if you want to know God, just go and read the Bible. Don't even come and question me or ask me. God can stand up for himself. And he does. Um, just to that uh, response to that, brother, I agree with Pastor Glenn in large part. You know the people tell us that if the plain reading of scripture makes sense, Seeking out the sense. But why is it that we rely on the works of scholarship? Firstly, biblical scholars, and particularly
particularly Quranic scholars have spent a considerable amount of time through research through their particular understandings. And so the materials that they produce and the works that they produce naturally speaking comes from men who are flawed undoubtedly, but at the same time men who have spent a considerable amount of time on the particular texts. I can't see there being a problem with discussing their works in an academic forum such as this. The other point is that, fair enough, um, we, we look at experience, and experience is important, but at the end of the day we are living in a materialistic, secular society. And unfortunately, be that as it may, secular society makes demands upon us as believers, Muslims and Christians, and that's part of the discussion tomorrow, Christian-Muslim relations in the post-modern age uh, at Pastor Bob's uh, church where we will be unpacking and dealing with this. So I think because material culture and secular culture makes demands on us, place certain tests upon us, it stands to reason that we use extraneous material in certain instances, not necessarily as the ultimate test, but to say, look, if this is your criteria for the atheist, science for example, well, let's look at scripture and contrast with science. And if scripture basically is in full harmony with the most latest discoveries, it begs the question, what then was the source of that original text 1400 years or 1000 years before? I'd just like to end with one point in scripture. This is from the book of Job, chapter 25, verse 4. It says, how then can man be justified with God, or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not, yet the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a maggot, and the son of man, which is a world? A simple answer to that. Christ died and rose again to demonstrate the justice of God and that he might be just and justify of you that believe in Jesus. Our friend down there talked about why don't we just take the word of God? Nobody will understand this word unless they've been given the gift of faith by God Himself. And that's where our accountability comes. It's not our works, never. It's what God gives us. And if He doesn't give us faith, we're going to help We also like to thank the uh, uh, brother uh, uh, I know this sounds funny, but the Adams family who have looked after us in our and Organizers like IPCI and other people who have been involved in helping organize this activity. Brother Asu for his driving around and, and, and help with everything. Obviously, Brother Bob and Glenn as well for their activities. And also to all the citizens of PE for actually coming out and, and supporting something like this. Remember one thing when you leave here to leave in peace. As Muslims, we always greet each other with peace and uh, we ask that Allah's peace or God's peace will be with you. And don't leave here with anger and hate, leave here with peace. And we respect each other when we see each other. We don't be afraid to greet a Muslim with a uh, proper, proper peace greeting. Uh, it's not going to change religion because you said that. It's just a sign of respect. And uh, when, you, when you leave here, we will respect each other. And what we have, we have two books that we would like to give. And we call them the Book of Life and, and Durban. And they took Qurans that we'd like to give. Quran and Bob and Glenn.